Hello, my name is Anthony Shivkumar, and in this video, we're going to talk about profiling your C code. When it comes to writing C code, or any code for that matter of fact, you want to know how long does your function take to execute. And especially when you're writing a program that might be critical, you really want to know, you know, whether it's consuming a lot more time than it should, what's the problem, you know, maybe you're in some infinite loop and you want to figure that out. And this is exactly what this video series, series is, this particular video is all about. So let's get started. One of the tools that we're going to use is called gprof, which is a Google, uh, Google, I'm saying, it's a GNU profile um, command line tool, which allows you to uh, compile your code in such a way that when you run gprof, it's able to calculate the amount of time spent in each function. So let me show you an example over here. So what I have, I've already coded, is uh, something called as the Fibonacci series. And the Fibonacci series basically has uh, is a sequence of numbers. It's a very common interview coding question challenge where if you're applying for a job, especially in a software firm, they're gonna ask you these questions, you know, can you program say a Fibonacci series? And what it really does, and I'm using some form of dynamic programming with some memo memoization. And I'm sure you exactly what this code, I'll explain to you what I'm doing over here. So the simple function is that um, a Fibonacci series is uh, basically the, addition of two previous numbers uh, is basically, so for example, if I have a zero, it's gonna be zero. If it's gonna be one, then it's gonna be zero plus, say zero. So it's gonna be one, uh, zero plus one. Uh, uh, these two are generally how we start this Fibonacci series. And for two, it's gonna be zero plus one, it's gonna be two. Uh, three is gonna be one plus one, it's gonna be two. Uh, four is gonna be two plus one, it's gonna be three. And you keep going down the list where the value of Fibonacci 8 is nothing but 8 plus 13, and 8 comes from 6 plus uh, the Fibonacci of 6 plus 6 Fibonacci of 7. That's really, in a nutshell, what it's doing. So it's basically, um, you know, calculating the addition of the two previous numbers, uh, and 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 that number is calculated by the previous two, you know, index of the those two Fibonacci numbers and stuff like that. There are various ways of writing this program, uh, but in this particular case, I'm using a recursive function. And in a recursive function, I'm just basically calling the function again and again and again. So what I'm doing over here is uh, I am, you know, saying what's Fibonacci of number 22? Doesn't matter. And if it's if it's zero, it's going to return zero. And if it's one, it's going to return one. And then if it's anything else beyond that, we're going to basically keep adding, you know, if it's two, we're going to take the value of index zero and index one index zero and index one. And then we store this into a common variable. And over time, uh, we calculate this, you know, for 22, uh, till, till we reach Fibonacci 22, and then we return this value. Now, because this is a very small number and it's a very fast iteration, I also have something called as time waster, which is basically saying after every loop, I'm gonna, you know, use a for loop over here that is gonna waste a, a lot more time. And it's going to count to 500 milliseconds or half a second or something of that sort. And what's the speed of my processor? Uh, it's probably going to be around less than, it's probably going to be like 50 milliseconds as far as I can tell. If I put this, if I, uh, if I can, if you know, if you basically divide this by the number of clock cycles that my speed of the, it's a virtual machine. Um, so it should still be the same. Uh, in terms of my frequency is 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, each instructions might take, you know, a clock cycle of, I don't know, one or two. You, if you do the math, you know, you can basically deduce, you know, how long will that particular function take to execute? Uh, I don't, I'm not really figured that out yet, uh, but I have just put in an, as many zeros as I feel is feels fit to slow down the program. That's really it. And what I'm gonna do over here is now basically compile the code. So what I've also done is created a simple make file. There is an, if you wanna know more about how to write make files, uh, you know, go check out my video on introduction to make. And here what we have is, this is very important why I'm gonna show you what, how we need to compile it for profiling is uh, you have a CC flag. Uh, this is my compiler GCC. I'm gonna have enabling warnings. And this is the, this is the core part of what makes this profiling work. You have to put in the option of profiler. G is for debug symbols, but P is profiling. You want this, this needs to be enabled in order for you to perform profiling, at least if you're using gprof. And then here I'm executing main and main.c and main.o um, in order for us to compile the, uh, the binary. And the C flags has PG in both values 
while it's generating the while it's compiling into the object file and while it's compiling and generating the executable. So this is critical if you want to do profiling, having that option PG. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do is I am going to basically compile this code. So I'm just going to click make and it's compile this code. Now, when you look at this code, it's basically saying uh, I have an output over here. Uh, and it's generated the object file. But this is what Make has generated for us. It's created, it's called GCC with the C option. C is basically creating an object file with the warning option and PG. This is important. If you're going to profile it, you need to have at least the P uh, option. All right, the P flag. Now I need to run this program, A dot out. And now when I run this program, it's I basically have, uh, I'm basically printing out my iteration. And the value is 17,771 because I have set this to um, 22. Um, in, in, in dynamic programming, which they normally call, especially when it comes to you know, doing interviews and stuff, um, me storing all these values in A is basically called memoization. And memoization is basically saying that if you if you've already computed the value of a particular, say, function, uh, and, that, and, and the function is constantly recursively calling the function. If it's already calculated, you don't need to calculate it again. So that's the reason why, uh, so that's, that's, that's the definition of memoization. So I'm storing the value of A, and if A is not zero, um, then it's already calculated. And if it is zero, that means we need to calculate the value. And once it's stored, you just return the value. So in the beginning, the value of A is not, you know, it's all zero, 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 zero. So it's basically calling all these functions and recursively it's now computing all these values. And that's how we get this value. So that's uh, you know trivia if you if you're into uh, this type of stuff. Okay, uh, now what we have over here is um, a dot out. We have ran the program, and when you create the a dot out, because I've compiled it with the slash pg option, it's created this gmon dot output. This is the this is the profiling um, output that is required for us to now do the gprof. So in order to run the gprof, I'm just going to click gprof. Um, and here I'm just going to do a dot out. And here we can see that it's called function fib main and fib main is called the 42 times. We can literally calculate and count, you know, the amount of times it's called the iteration. That's the reason why I printed this out so that we can really calculate this called the 42 times. Um, uh, but it's showing that it's showing, you know, zero, 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 zero percent. And the reason why it's doing this is because it's basically calculating in terms of milliseconds. And the program is running way faster than milliseconds. It's running in, you know, in, in micro or not even micro, like it's really, it's running super fast. I mean, we're just adding two numbers. It's not going to be that slow, right? At least for a modern core i7 processor, uh, even on a virtual machine, it's still going to be super fast, uh, at least for what we're trying to do, right? So in order for us to really see and slow down this process, what I'm going to do is uncomment this time waster over here. And the time waster is literally going to have this for loop before we return the value. And the time waster is just going to have this for loop of counting till, you know, 500,000 and then, or, you know, what's one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, five million basically. It's not even 500,000, five million or five crores if you, uh, depending on which country you're from. Um, count to five, 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 five million or five crores. And then, um, and then, you know, call this function again, you know, recursively. That's really what we're doing over here. And now let's compile the whole thing. So I'm just going to do a make clean just to clean up everything. We don't have to do this. It, it should just compile no matter what. We have compiled the file again. We're going to generate the output. And now you can see it's a little slower because we're counting after every iteration. And once we cal count after, not every iteration, count only when we are calculating the Fibonacci series. And once it's done that, uh, we'll now do the gprof. gprof uh, a dot out. And here you will see that, oh, okay. Now it's taking a lot more time. It's now calling this function. Let's call this function 42 times as we can count if you go on top and we have two functions right now. So we have something called as the fib, the fib um, function over here. And we also have the time waster function over here. So it's basically going from main to time waster fib and then we've got time waster alone. So fib is calling time waster and then the time waster over here. So this is what this function is doing. And it's calling time waster 40 times out of the 42 times it's been called. And it makes sense because the first two times uh, nothing is uh, computed and then 
it's just constantly curved. The first two times we don't call time waster, we return, and then the next uh, 40 times it's going to call for uh, time waster. And then it basically says it's taking you know 3.2 milliseconds uh, to compute time waster, and here we go. And time waster has been called from fifth. That's really how you're you know reading this. But as you can see, um, this is not necessarily. I mean, it it's a, gives you a high level overview of which function is consuming a lot more time than it should. And it's and it's great if you have a function that is safe in an infinite for loop or is taking too much time, uh, what's going on. This can at least tell you, hey, you know what, this function is, um, you know, uh, is, is consuming a lot more time than it should. Uh, maybe we need to, you know, look into it. Another tool that I find a lot more helpful is uh, using the Linux uh, profile tool. All right, so um, I think it's called uh, PREF. Uh, perf. Yeah, so the perf tool. And what this does is um, this allows uh, you to even see the actual object file in, the, in even the assembly code. So let's have a look at what I mean by, mean by this. So in order for me to do this, I'm just going to click perf. Uh, you, can, you need to install. So perf is installed based on the Linux version that you have installed. Um, so if you don't have it installed, just do sudo apt install perf. It'll give you instructions of uh, uh, just just type in perf if you haven't if you don't have it installed, and it'll give you instructions on what type of sudo apt install version you need to do in order because it'll match based on the Linux uh, version that you have. All right, so I'm just going to put perf record, um, and I'm going to do an a dot uh, out, uh, and here it's going to say I don't have some. So let me just remove what I have. I'm just going to remove, remove my perf.data. Uh, so it's going to create a perf.data. So I'm just going to remove all. We have a clean folder over here. I'm going to do, say, sudo. Uh, you might need to use sudo perf um, uh, record. Uh, so we're going to record executing this, this file. And we're just going to do uh, a dot slash uh, a dot out. And and what it's doing right now, it's now it's executing the program, and while it's executing the program, it's collecting data based on uh, you know how long it's taking to function. And after it does that, it'll create this perf that data. All right. Uh, once you have this perf that data, now it's time to read uh, read the data. And the way you read this data is basically type in prf slash report. All right, here we have it. <laughs> so it's basically saying that what we have over here. So we have a dot out, and there's ninety eight percent of our time is spent in time waster, which is not shocking because this is ninety eight percent of our function is spent on you know computing this for loop. So let's have a look at you know what it's telling us over here. So we can even go to annotate time waster, and this is what I like about this function is because now it tells you in the assembly line of code where exactly is your um, code taking you know a longer time to uh, why is it taking a longer time and just to give you a nutshell in assembly what this does is it's basically saying let's add a number so we're adding one so here we're basically adding one um, and here we're doing a compare to the left and here we're comparing here you know, in this particular case five five million so we're comparing this particular value with this the value in this particular address with you know with this particular value in this particular address and if it is less than this value, so jump if it's less than to 1b, and this is 1b. So we're basically looping this, looping through all over this particular code in assembly. And this is an assembly. This is what the actual instruction is. Uh, all the C code is eventually uh, compiled into this particular format. And for your processor, this will, you know, this is what is really, what is it really executing, all right? Uh, and that's what it's doing over here. Uh, so this is a much more detailed analysis as to why and which part of your code is actually taking a long time. And it's highlighting it in red and saying, you might want to look into uh, why this particular part of your code is making more, uh, is, is causing the problem. And that's much more insightful than just telling me, you know, it's going to take, you know, 100, you know, one millisecond or two millisecond or this particular function is, uh, you know, consuming a lot more time. This is giving me even more details as to, you know, where exactly in the function do I have my problem? Uh, and I thought, I think this is a great way to, you know, to debug your code. So this is in a nutshell how you can profile your code. 
uh, and see how uh, you can improve on and improve and you know take your uh, coding to the next level that's all there is for it today and if you like what i showed you uh please do subscribe uh do like the video comment as much as you want if there's certain videos that you know you want to learn uh that um that are difficult to understand or if there are ways in which i can improve with my explanation uh, please comment below some of you know i recommended you know why don't i use a whiteboard in order for me to explain certain things i will probably be able to do that as well uh but if you can comment that'll be amazing so that you know i can improve and i can teach you uh exactly what you want to learn all right, until next time, take care.